Welcome to Sobcast the Podcast, where I, Christina Wolfgram, beg the question, what even is mental health? This podcast is created in collaboration with Dive Through, a mental wellness company that actually knows what they're talking about. Hello, my darlings. Would you like a little trigger warning? Because I have one fresh out of the oven for you. Say it with me now. Even though Sobcast the podcast is about the pursuit of good mental health, we will be talking about some not so good mental health things like anxiety, depression, and tender. Because today I'm asking all the questions that I have about dating, as in, what is it? Who, who is it? Um, how is it? How is it? Do we like dating? Is dating fun? Is dating cool? I don't know. I don't really know. This is going to sound a little silly, but as you may know, I got out of an eight-year relationship not too long ago, and I am feeling more myself lately. It's really nice. I've been singing a lot. Um, I've been feeling really creative and I've actually been enjoying talking to people way more. So I'm like, huh, dating. Um, cool. Maybe. Yes. Why not? But, um, because I was with the same person for eight years, I'm noticing a lack of knowledge. I'm noticing I have a hole in my knowings about what dating is <laughs> because I was so young. I was so young, which is crazy, but I met my last partner when I was, you know, like 22. I was 22. And because we were both in school, dating was like, I don't know. We, we, I know we went out to dinner, but like, also, we went to parties and, like, drank beer and, like, I don't know, we did a lot of group activities together. <laughs> um, when we met, I had a dumb phone. I didn't get my iPhone for, like, maybe a year until after we started dating. So, like, I've never been on a dating app except for the time when I jokingly signed up my friend for farmersonly.com which is a which is a dating website for farmers only so i was breaking the rules i was real bad making a profile for him there he's not a farmer neither am i so i thought we could talk about this there are a lot of like terms being thrown around i've been do you hear mr purring mr's excited i guess so I've been hearing a lot of terms being thrown around by my friends who are dating. I think I've been trying to like pay more attention now when people are talking about like their love lives because I'm like, how do you do that? What is that? And they say things like, yeah, me and this guy are talking. <laughs> talking. Okay, what does that mean? <laughs> I'm talking. All the time. <laughs> I talk to people every day. <laughs> Is that like talking after you're both interested? So that seems like so serious so fast that you have to be like, hello, I am interested in you or what? I don't know. I guess if you ask someone out on a date, that's like kind of already saying that you're interested in them. Um. So, well, I could ask my friends more about this, but instead I Googled... Um, <laughs> how to date obviously and um I, I took some notes so we're gonna go through this um okay so the first article that came up when I googled how to date was by Chloe Carmichael she, apparently she has a, t a PhD and she wrote this in 2019 on womenshealth.com um, or for Women's Health Magazine. So I know things have probably changed a lot. I'm sure the pandemic, I mean, it sh should have changed a lot, right? In terms of safety and like how, I don't know, like what even makes you want to meet another person? 
Anyway, she has this like comprehensive list. So it's 11, it's 11 bullet points um, on how to date. So let's dive into this. And I want to know if you find this crazy or if I'm just an old lady at this point. <clears throat> she says, date multiple people at once. That sounds like an episode of a sitcom where the cool older sister says yes to two dance dates and then she has to keep like telling one of them that she has to go to the bathroom and is juggling both of these guys attention and then at the end of the episode it doesn't work out very well and she's very sorry about it oh mister okay i don't know what do you think although if you're dating multiple people at once as in like you're going on multiple dates or, like, you're going on first dates. That doesn't sound weird, I guess, right? Because they're just first dates. It's not like you're... Or is it? Or is it you have... Do you, Is it cool to have, like, three girlfriends now? I don't know. I, as a Taurus and as, like, a very sensitive person who feel... Whose, like, greatest fear is to be replaceable, that would not sit well with me. But, I mean, I guess I'm, like, open to learning more. And that's just number one. So um, point number two is keep dates short. She suggests 90 minutes. So like exactly the length of Space Jam. Yeah, sure. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Are you done? Mr. is all over me. He hates me all day until I start talking. And then he's like, why aren't you paying attention to me? Okay. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, 90 minutes actually seems like a really long time to me. <laughs> is, that, is that nuts? I don't know if you're meeting someone for the first time and you have nothing to talk about. I think you could go home earlier. I don't know. You have to like protect your energy. But then again, if you meet up with someone and you really like them and then 90 minutes goes by really fast. I don't know. That just feels eh. maybe rules just make me uncomfortable. Maybe I don't like rules. I'm just not a, I'm not a rule follower. I'm a, I'm a rule breaker. We can hang out for a hundred minutes, I guess, if I think you're funny. Um, the next thing she suggests is be upfront about wanting a relationship. Which, yeah, I think that would be really important if you're like, I don't know, if it seems like the other person is just interested in hooking up. Do we still call it hooking up? And when I say hooking up, do you think I mean like making out in the car or like having sex in your bed? Because they those feel really different to me. Am I, is that, am I normal? I don't know. But um, yeah, I, yeah, I think being up front is important because obviously you don't want anyone to have hurt feelings or like you don't want to like make out with someone in the car and then they never want to make out with you in the car again, Right. That would be very sad I, for me. I don't know about you. I mean, y you know yourself better than I do. So, um, but, uh, something else about this that I've been thinking about is like, I am so confused <laughs> about what I want because of this, this whole breakup thing, because I'm, I think I thought I was in a really serious relationship that was forever, but, but there wasn't enough communication about that. Um, so that's definitely something I want to do in the future is be more clear with myself and also whoever I'm with about what I want, but also I don't know what I want. <laughs> right? That's kind of hard. Is there like a BuzzFeed quiz I can take about that? Like, I don't know. I really love living by myself right now. That feels so good. 
It feels so good to live by myself. And um, I don't know, but I don't think that's forever. I think it's a really good thing for right now. I plan on being fabulously wealthy. So like in my future mansion, I can just have a, an office where I can be alone most of the time. Right? That's what people do. I don't know. It's, so do you think that's what I should say? Hi, I'm Christina. I'm so excited for our first date bowling or whatever people do. Um, I just wanted to let you know before we get our bowling shoes that I think I want to have a room in our house where I can be alone sometimes. <laughs> that's my idea of it. That's like my ideal relationship. So just wanted to let you know before this goes anywhere. Like... <laughs> I don't know. And then and then it's weird because part of me is like, yeah, I want to meet someone who like wants to be married and like be serious. Like, hell yeah, that's a sign of maturity and like something I'm interested in. But then also I think I would get so freaked out if someone on like our first date was like, I am looking for my wife. <laughs> I don't know. What does it all mean? Anyway, let's move on. Um, Number four is avoid talking about exes on early dates. So I'm obviously going to have to work on that as well. I think this goes into like a cycle of oversharing that I think about, which is where I feel awkward or anxious. So I over explain why I feel awkward or anxious just in case I've given any indication that I feel awkward and anxious so, and then it just, it's like too much information for the other person. Like it doesn't, it doesn't actually matter. They can't do any, it's a me problem. You know, they can't do anything about it. I just want, I just, I'm so worried about them thinking that I'm acting weird that then I act weird. So I th like, part of me is like, I should go on dates and be like, listen, like be gentle. I, I've been really hurt. But then again, Hi, you're meeting me never knowing my ex-boyfriend. How cool is that? I could, I mean, you just know me as I am in this moment. That's fantastic. Like, let's not talk about any ex-boyfriends. Let's not talk about any exes. Yeah? Yes? I think that sounds good. Also, yeah, I don't know. W one red flag I have is if people like really, really shit talk their exes, which is so ironic. Isn't that what I'm doing right now? I don't know. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. Let's move on. Okay, so number five is pay more attention to follow through than advanced planning. And I think what she was saying with that is just that like, don't get caught up in someone being like, I will see you two weeks from now or whatever. Like, like sometimes someone might be like, hey, I just got out of work. Like, can I hang out with you? And neither of those things bothers me. In fact, planning stresses me out so much. So the more control someone takes about that, the better, I think. Oh, gosh. See, but that might be a red flag for someone else. Although that's what being yourself is for. I'm fine. Okay, um, six. <laughs> six makes me laugh because it's all these all this serious stuff, I think. And then it's number six is don't feel obligated to send a thank you text. <laughs> I guess this must be part of like the manners, the dating manners that I just like don't know about yet. Like I don't know, can't you say thank you at the end of the date? Like Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for your time. I know your time is valuable. Like, or thank you for dinner or thank you for telling me about your childhood. I don't know. Like, or does it have to be a text? This, it reminds me, that reminds me so much of like this, this advice that gets thrown around in LA a lot. That's like, if you meet with a manager, or you meet with an agent, like you have to send a personalized thank you note or they think they'll think you're a piece of shit. I don't know. Like these things people make up <laughs> to make you feel bad, I think. So, I mean, I guess I agree. Don't feel obligated to send a thank you text unless you want to. <laughs> I don't know. 
the, watching me go on like one date and then I'm just waiting at home like where's my thank you text I have my you're welcome text already Whew. Um, okay number seven give them two weeks to reach out again yeah and you can also reach out I am j- I just realized something I think like rules like remind me of magazines I used to read when I was a teenager that I think messed with my development probably and so that is pinging some little button in my mind that's like all or nothing like you have to be a perfect woman and this is how you do it like if you get in touch with someone before two weeks then they'll know you're interested and that would be so terrible because you can't show that you're interested because you're a woman and you're not allowed to have like any like wants or needs so I don't know about that one because like don't you want to be with someone who wants to hear from you sooner than two weeks I guess to each his and her own. Um, Number eight. Wait at least a few dates to have sex. Okay. I'm sure. Yeah, that's a question. That's I'm glad for that advice, I guess. (laughs) Um, But uh, what does a few mean? (laughs) I had to Google it. Um, The first definition of a few that I found is not many, but more than one. So, I guess we can, like, meet for coffee. That's one. And then and then after that, it's just <laughs> free for all. I don't know. Mm. This so has to do with feelings. I don't know. And, like, comfort levels. Um, th- another thing that Google told me was that a few can mean three or more. Which is weird. I always thought a few was, like, two or more. But if you have that rule for yourself, I just, like, I feel like one of two things could happen. Or to me. I don't even, I don't know you. I'm not the boss of you. This is me talking about myself. But um, I feel like if I was like, I will only have sex after the third date, then I think I would, <laughs> I would go to the third date just, like, sweating and being like, I think we might I don't know, we might have sex later. (laughs) Like, I have, like, condoms falling out of my pockets. I don't know. (laughs) But I'm like, okay, third date, it's gonna happen. I should probably start telling you about all my trauma now. Now seems like a good time, because I'm gonna need to trust you. So, where do I start? Okay, so when I was eight... (laughs) Wow, so sexy. Um, And then on the other hand, I could see myself like going on the third date and there's just not chemistry, not sparks or like it's just not a good time to be like trying to have sex with someone new. And then I am disappointed because I'm like, well, everyone else is having sex on the third date. So look at me failing. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. I cannot get into this too much, but like... (laughs) have you or anyone you know like (laughs) sorry I'm not giggling this is this is me and my mom during when she gave me the sex talk we were both just like giggling really hard but like (laughs) so people have sex with the same person for many years and then they have sex with someone else that's so crazy that's so crazy Cool, cool, cool. (laughs) Okay, let's move on before I get weird. Wouldn't want that. Okay, number nine. Don't freak out about who pays. Don't freak out. Do not cause a scene. (laughs) Please lower your voice. (laughs) I get this. I think, like, I... It's a, that's another, like, goes both ways. I, like, I feel really spoiled and, like, taken care of when someone pays for my meal. But then I like making someone else feel spoiled and taken care of by paying for their meal or whatever. So I feel like that's just a communication thing. And, like, 
honestly might be part of you getting to know each other is how you react to that. I don't know. Mm. Uh -oh. I do know mm. that during like business meetings that I've had where you get coffee, it's like a power move to buy the other person's coffee with like their company card or whatever. And I know this because sometimes I would take meetings for the free coffee. Please don't tell anyone that. Okay. Anyway, 10, feel free to do some of the planning yourself. Yeah, I think that sounds like a good idea. I mean, you do have a life. <laughs> so, you know, planning is good. Um, do what's do what's right for you. Um, and if you're not a planner, then alert alert the other party, I think probably, so they know that they're the navigator. And you know what? Who knows? Like, that might be, like, how you know the other person is, like, the one for you because they're, like, I love planning. You hate planning? I love it. I'm so glad you don't want to plan because I, I love control. <laughs> I'm a Virgo. I don't know. Okay, and then this is the last one, and this one is kind of... <clears throat> Number 11, eat whatever the heck you want. Thank you so much for the permission, Chloe. I'm serious. I think that's, I mean, it's sadly that that's an important thing to include, I think, which sucks. And I know Chloe gets it. She probably hears a lot of people fretting about that. I remember back in like the 1800s when I was dating people out in the world. Who, me? Yes, me. Um that I was dating this guy and I think I was so nervous around him that I just never really ate that much. And then, and like, that's not how I am normally at all. Like I am very much a like lick my plane, <laughs> lick my plane. I lick my private jet on dates. No, I usually lick my plate clean. I like, I like, I feel, I love food and I, I'm a hungry person. Um, so one time after a few months of dating, he like looked me in the eyes and was like, it's so funny how you eat like a little bird. <laughs> I stayed with him for a lot longer, but that should have been a sign that I wasn't being myself around him because, um, hello, <laughs> that's not... A little bird, can you imagine? I'm just like, <laughs> no, I was just nervous and I had like a clenched stomach at all times. <laughs> so that can also be an indicator. I mean, you know, your intuition is usually right. Like if you continuously feel nervous around someone, I don't know that that's the best. But I don't know. I am not the person to be giving any kinds of dating advice seeing as I am an elderly woman <laughs> um, who hasn't been on a date in like a decade. So anyway, <clears throat> anyway, um, now is the special time, you know, the special time, which is where I get to read you an ad. I love it so much. I'm practicing my voice, my special ad voice. All right, you ready? <clears throat> Do you struggle with your mental health? and feel like you have difficulty managing your emotions? Dive Through is partnered with mental health professionals to create interactive courses, including the free course, Self-Regulating Your Emotions, so you feel like you have the tools to live a mentally healthier and more fulfilling life. Download the Dive Through app for free on the App Store or Google Play. That's so much fun. Wow, should I quit everything and become a voiceover person? Not a not become a voiceover person. Um become an amateur voice person. <laughs> great. Cool, 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 cool. Great, great, great. Um so yeah, thank you for sitting with me while I just went through that whole article. I just found it so interesting. Um, because there are some things that I think it didn't cover that are on my mind. Um, one of them is like safety. Like I think if you're going to meet someone that you don't know, it, 
even if it feels like overkill, pun intended, pun unintended, I don't know. But even if it feels like overkill, like sending your location to your friend or someone who's close by is a great idea. In fact, like you should consider having a couple people that you always share your location with and then just, you know, just be like, hey, I'm going on a date. And then that opens, that opens up a conversation so that later someone can be like, how was it? And you can just you know, have someone to to talk to about it. I think that's cool and safer. Um, I just want everyone to be happy and safe. And I guess that's that. Um, And another thing that wasn't on this list was alcohol and other substances because the reason that's on my mind is because I've never dated while I've been sober. So actually... Even the last, you know, few months when I've been meeting people in Portland, that's been really interesting because it's probably the most amount of people that I've met while I've been sober. And I mean, obviously, before I stopped drinking, it wasn't like when I met new coworkers or like like everyone that I met up with, like I was intoxicated when I first talked to them. But I will say that some of the like times where a relationship went from acquaintance to friendship was over alcohol. And I think that was partly because I would drink and just like my walls would come down, which was part of the comfort of it. Um. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm really curious to see how that'll go. Also, I'm I'm really curious to see if like that's a that's like a game breaker. A game breaker. You know what I'm talking about. No, what am I talking about? Not a game breaker. That's a game changer. Oh no, I'm sure you're sitting in your car being like like yelling the word at me. It's okay, I can hear you. A deal breaker. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. (laughs) Yeah, I wonder if the sobriety will be a deal breaker. Or also, like, me being on the internet, is that a deal breaker? I don't know. I do, like, my ex liked when I wrote about us, which was really sweet and supportive and cool. Um, Yeah, I don't know. But I can also see why... I don't know, starting to date someone who is talking about this on her podcast would be something, be something to think about. I don't know. I need to Google myself. I haven't, I don't really do that, but what even comes up? What even, is it like that time I tried to be an ASM artist for like two days? Because that, that wouldn't be good. Or maybe it would. I don't know. Maybe maybe that's fine. Maybe I should start with that. Hello. Welcome to our first date. I'm Christina. And I'm going to help you fall asleep. (laughs) Yikes. Oh, my gosh. I think so. I've been thinking about all this like first date, getting back into the playing field, whatever you want to call it stuff and it's like so exciting which is great which makes me feel like I'm more open to it um and I think I've realized that the first date stuff the first few date things I'm not I mean maybe I'm a little nervous but I think in a good way but uh that's not what I'm actually scared of Uh, (laughs) um I think I've always been pretty good at first impressions um, because I love people and I want to make them laugh and I want to, I want them to feel heard, but uh, I'm really worried about the stuff that comes after that, like... Like, the first time you don't want to have sex (laughs) or like when I have to reveal how, how much student loans 
I have and might always have. I don't know. Or <laughs> trying to explain that sometimes I have migraines that last some days and I turn into an actual baby person slug. And sometimes it might feel like you have to take care of me, but you don't. <sighs> like, I'm not scared to, like, meet a new family. But I'm scared for, like, the first, like, family secrets. <laughs> or, like, the first disagreement. The first disagreement that doesn't get resolved. Ooh. The first time I spit out, you need to go to therapy. I guess I'm not looking forward to that stuff. Maybe it'll never happen. Maybe I'll maybe, maybe be pleasantly surprised. Ugh. I never... No, this feels so unfair because it's... I don't think it's a reasonable expectation to, um, to put on anybody, but I feel at this moment that I could not stand seeing a look of disappointment on somebody's face because of me. Oh, maybe I still have some healing to do also. So this is a good reminder. Oh, this has nothing to do with dating, but also everything to do with dating. I started seeing a new therapist. Her name is Anne. I don't know if I'm supposed to tell you that. I won't tell you her last name, but yeah, we've had two dates. So I guess the next one is when we do it. I'm just kidding. Um, we've had two sessions and that's been interesting. I feel like something that's been coming up a lot is that I'm realizing, um, like how much my self-esteem has like crumbled and I don't fully blame my past relationship. I kind of blame myself a little bit because that's my responsibility and, um, I guess I wasn't really keeping track of, like, how small I felt. And it's not even just in a relationship. I think even before it was, like, with creativity and with, like, body stuff. I don't know. I You know what? I'll talk to my therapist about it and I'll get back to you. But please cross your fingers for me and Anne. Like, what if she's the one? I don't know. This is, this is, I, this is unfair to her, but I really miss my old therapist. I miss her so much and I hope she's doing okay. And I feel like she'd have so many funny things to say about me dating or whatever. <laughs> so that's really nice to think about, to imagine. Maybe I'll call her. Is that allowed? I don't know. I don't know. You know, that wasn't... So that one article I found, even though it had 11 points, I wasn't quite satisfied. So I also looked up... I looked at the next article that came up and it's wikihow.com slash date. And it's called How to Date. It was last updated September 3rd, 2021. So... That was pretty recent, so it must be professional. Um, I scrolled down just a little bit, and it says, f part one, finding a potential date. And then it's a picture of a groom putting a ring on a bride's finger. <laughs> oh, my God. Yee. No pressure. I actually, I don't think, I don't. I don't think I need to look through this anymore. That says everything I need to know, right? I'm good. I am all set. I also, I looked at Tinder.com. I went to Tinder.com and read through it. And I'm definitely not ready for that. That feels so, I don't know, maybe I should do some research into like how that's affecting people's mental health because... I, already I was just like, what the hell picture do I put on this? 
How can I possibly... How could anybody know anybody from this? This is... I don't get it at all. It's like it's like trading Pokemon cards. It's just like, I don't really know what this Pikachu does. I just think it's cute. Like, okay. That's not useful. I don't know. And then also like... Like texting and communicating with someone. Like I take it really seriously. And also not seriously because i have worried i would troll people a lot you know ah. Ah. huh huh what is it all about i know a lot of my friends have met i mean my brother and his husband met on a dating app like hell yes one of my best friends in the whole world I remember she was like on dating apps and what she would do was she would just like schedule a date for every night of the week. She wanted free dinners. Get it, girl. Like, yes. And then she like went on a date with this guy and it was like all over. They were in love and she did get dinner and then she got more dinner and then they got so many dinners. And then one night he took her out to dinner and asked him to marry her. Ask her to marry her. Ask. They are married. (laughs) I went to their wedding they're really happy and sweet. And so, I don't know, I'm not knocking anything, but I don't think I'm, I don't, I think I'd rather go into like an AOL chat room than like sign up for Tinder. I don't know. If I make a profile, people might see it. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it's, it, it will be public. Like I could be, it, it, whew, whew. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, okay. Those are all my thoughts. Oh, also I got this book. I went to the big bookstore here in Portland. Finally, it's called Powell's. There's like a mini Powell's right by my apartment. So I can, and I can walk to it. So that's like a comfort place I go. If I want to just like walk around, I'll walk there and just smell everything, but I was a big girl and I drove downtown to the Big Powell's and they have new and used books. And also it's so gigantic that you need a map and all the rooms are color coded. They have like a helper in each room because I'm thinking people get really lost in there. Anyway, I got this book and it says all it's called All About Love and it's by Bell Hooks and Bell Hooks does not capitalize their first or last name. So pretty psyched to learn more about that. Um, I don't know the, let me see. Um, the word love is most often defined as a noun yet we would all love better if we used it as a verb, writes bell hooks as she comes out fighting on fire in all about love. Here, at her most provocative and intensely personal, the renowned scholar, cultural critic, and feminist skewers and feminist skewers our view of love as romance. In its place, she offers a proactive new ethic for a people and a society bereft with lovelessness. Okay, yeah, tell me everything. Um, yeah, and my Angelou apparently liked this book, so. Yeah, I'll I'll maybe I'll report back. Let me know. Um, like and subscribe if you want me to talk about the Bell Hooks book. <laughs> and in the meantime, if you have any advice or even just like some funny dating stories, like please, like send. I don't know if you feel comfortable sharing it in public, like comments on our Instagram, Sobcast the podcast, or feel free to send us a DM because that would make me so happy. Also, I wanted to say, if you ever have any questions or topics you want me to cover, please, please, please let me know. Um, we're checking DMs. Um, and I don't know. I just, I want, this is for you. I'm making this for you. I made this for you. Anyone? Maybe what I really want, you know what I think a perfect date would be is just like 
watching all our favorite YouTube videos and being like, what is your humor? I'm judging you. (laughs) What do you think? Huh? All right. Well, I hope you're doing great. I hope your dating life or your romantic life and also your love life with yourself is just like the most exciting thing that's ever happened. And I don't know, you deserve it. You deserve to feel good. I will talk to you next week. Thank you so much for listening. I love you. Bye. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. It would super help if you subscribed, left a review, call your grandma, tell her to listen. And if you want more, Sobcast the podcast, follow us on Instagram. All right. See you next week. Love you. Bye.